Hello and welcome to another bonus episode of Movies, colon, they're pretty good. Uh, back for another Oscar watch update. Um, seen a couple movies since the last episode. Uh, not uh, Haven't finished the Best Picture list yet, but I did see two more Best Picture nominees. Um, so uh, starting with that, uh, let's just get that out of the way. Um, I was able to see women talking in the theater and i watched all quiet on the western front on netflix so um to update my list i wouldn't i wouldn't put any of them in the top you know uh i would say it's still everything everywhere all at once still then top gun then banshees then avatar uh then women talking then All Quiet on the Western Front, and then Elvis. And then... Yeah, so that's that for now. Uh, other than that, like nothing's really changed. It's just the two new ones I saw went between Avatar and elvis that's it yeah no nothing too exciting there but um just to share my thoughts on those uh i thought that uh women talking uh at first i was expecting it to be a little different i think like just the structure of the film uh i feel and i haven't i you know i haven't even looked into this uh it felt very play-like and maybe it is based on a play uh i'll if it is i will try to look that up before the next uh bonus episode and share that information but um because it's uh very long scenes probably about like three very long scenes with a few other short scenes in between um but it it was a very good movie and like uh at first i was like oh, i'm not sure if i am enjoying it but then uh i was talking about it with my fiance after the movie uh and then i just couldn't stop raving about it like i was just like okay maybe i did like really like this movie um i would still put it like in that spot where i have it but it's it's great i loved it like it was really good and i just kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it i think that's a good sign that and you know maybe uh i don't don't think it'll be on streaming before the ceremony but sometime in in the future i do plan on giving it another shot and everything and you know maybe my views on it will change um but yeah it's a great movie i do recommend it uh and then as for all quiet on the western front uh I uh, enjoyed that one as well. Um, it felt kind of long in some parts. Um, maybe I just wasn't in the right mindset when I was watching it, but I did enjoy, like, enjoyed what I saw. And you know, it's a it's a typical war movie. Um, so like, it, you kind of have to be in the right mood for that uh but it it was good yeah i liked i liked the i liked how it showed this uh like these young boys uh all excited to join up and everything like that and just like having no idea what they're getting themselves into and just seeing how that how they're affected over time and everything like that and then just also it's just nice to see there's not a lot of world war one movies or like that take place during that time uh so it's it's always interesting to see another one and i i i do highly recommend the original uh, all quiet on the western front from the 30s i think that was the second best picture winner if i am remembering correctly but that's also a very good movie um but yeah that one's good that one's on netflix if you haven't seen it just give it a shot it's good uh it's in in german uh is the native language for that film uh it i think it's germany's uh 
submission for international film as well. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's it for updates on best picture. Uh, best actor has stayed the same, but I am, as of this recording, I have a ticket to see the whale tomorrow. So next week I'll update you on that. Uh, Best actress. This do, I do have an update on this. I uh, watched the film Blonde on Netflix, and I gotta say I was very, I was surprised how much I enjoyed it because it got obviously got a lot of buzz before it was released and everything. Everyone was like, "Oh, like there's this Marilyn Monroe biopic coming out." and like that's a big deal in and of itself um then the casting was a big deal and then when it was announced that it's going to have an nc-17 rating that was a big deal and all these things and then it came out and then it seemed like everybody hated it and i was just like okay like then like my interest in wanting to see it just basically vanished at that point and then like I was surprised uh, because I, I did like none. Of, there was no indication that like it was going to get nominated for anything like prior to it, and then out of nowhere, Anna de Armas is nominated for Best Actress. I was like, okay, well, you know, now I'll give it a shot. And you know, maybe it was just that my expectations were so low, but I I really like was pleasantly surprised, and that like pleasantly is not the right word i was just surprised that it was a better movie than i thought it was going to be because there was not a lot pleasant about that film it is very dark it is extremely dark extremely depressing uh probably will not ever watch it again it was just a bummer through and through but her performance was incredible and so it is just like at this point and because I really do want uh, Michelle Yeoh to take it, but I won't be upset if Ana de Armas gets it. Uh, so yeah, right now I would say they're neck and neck. Like I would give a slight edge to Michelle Yeoh for everything ever well at once, but hey, like Ana de Armas, she deserves to be in this category. All right. Moving on, uh, no change to supporting actor, or no updates, no updates in supporting actress, no director updates, uh, no screenplay updates, uh, ada- or no original screenplay updates, uh, adapted screenplay, uh, all Quiet on the Western Front was in there, and so was Women Talking. So now we got a little more to talk about with this category. Uh, I would say I'd give it to Women Talking on this one. Um, I, that's now my new lead for this category uh, because Top Gun was great, you know, but you're not really going to Top Gun for the writing. You're going for the cinematography, the action, and all that type of stuff. Um, and it's it's well written. It was good. It was a good story. And they took this like thirty plus year old property and like made it relevant again, and everyone loved it. So they did a good job with that. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna put my money on it. The writing being what brought everybody there, you know. Um, as for women talking it was very well written it was just a very compelling story i was glued to the screen the whole time and i was in the theater so you you know can't help but be glued to the screen and that does help um i'd love to be able to see all these films in the theater but it's just not possible these days with so many of them um but yeah uh I'd, i'd give that the lead um then probably top gun then all quiet on the western front then glass onion uh i don't know 
yeah. But to be honest, like, I'm not going to be sad if any of those, like, I'm not going to be upset by any of those winning. Um, still haven't seen Living yet, so I'll come back to that if I do get a chance to see it. Uh, cinematography. Um, so now it's basically All Quiet versus Elvis. I'm going to give it to All Quiet on the Western Front. Uh, I liked the look of it a little better than Elvis. Elvis did look good, but um, I don't know. I think I'm just a sucker for those like big sweeping shots and everything like that that All Quiet on the Western Front had. So, yeah, not much to add on that. Um, but yeah, it, it looked great. It was a great looking movie. Um, moving on, no change in film editing or no updates. Uh, production design. So now the only one I haven't seen in this category is the Fablemans. Um, pretty sure i gave it to babylon i'm gonna keep that as my number one pick but good production design on all quiet and good production design on elvis and then like i said with avatar it's a lot of screens so it's a lot of cg so not too keen on that winning but we'll see now here now I've seen all of the best achievement in costume design because I watched Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. It was streaming on Peacock, and I got to say that it might be, like, the biggest surprise of all of them. I was just like, oh, you know, like, it's nominated. I'll throw it on in the background, like, while I was going to do some other things. And, wow, like, that, that I had to, like, put my, I had to pause it so I could finish the work I was doing and then come back to it with, like, my full attention because this movie was great. It was just so, like, I was just smiling from ear to ear. Just, it was so delightful, charming, uh, just fun, cute movie. I loved it. Um, yeah. Just uh, highly recommend that one if you get a chance to see it. Um, the costumes were great. Uh, Leslie Manville's great. I love. Uh, I loved her in um, Phantom Thread. She was great in that, and so I was excited to see her in this. And she she did such a good job. Great movie. Um, as for the costumes, it's it's very well costumed. Uh, but I think I still like uh everything everywhere all at once a little more but because mrs harris goes to paris just standard period piece costumes and stuff like that um but it's great and wouldn't be upset if it won i think all of these are well deserved in the costume design category so if any of them takes it great um best sound also seen all of these now uh hmm all quiet on the western front sounded really good they did a good job with that i mean honestly any of these can take it and it's good um achieving the makeup uh no change uh, All Quiet was nominated for that, and I mean, it looked good, but nothing, just some like mud and blood caked on the face and everything like that, nothing, still gonna give it to um, the Batman for the, the penguin look on uh, Colin Farrell. Achievement in music written for motion picture, original score. Now... I have an update for this. Well, I think I'm still going to keep it where I have it for Babylon. But the thing is, like, so All Quiet on the Western Front was nominated. But, and the score stuck out, but it was also just because it felt different to me. It just felt too modern, in my opinion, for a, like, 19... A movie that's taking place in 1918 with a lot of drums and guitar but 
I don't know, but it like it fit, but it didn't, in my opinion. So I'm just kind of on the fence on that. Maybe I'll give it a little more thought, and maybe my thoughts will change on that uh, next week. But as of now, I'm I'm not loving the score on All Quiet on the Western Front. Uh, moving on, uh, no updates on original song. Uh, visual effects. Um, they were good in uh, All Quiet on the Western Front because, like I said before, uh, I had seen the like a side by side uh, photos of like a before and after for the visual effects on All Quiet on the Western Front, and got to see seeing seeing the final product. It's felt seamless to me there wasn't any time like where i was like oh like all the stuff in the background cg it looks fake or anything like that so maybe that makes it better than the other ones but top gun was great too that was also pretty seamless and i can't think of anything in the batman that seemed like overly fake looking like i could with avatar and black panther um so yeah like any of those win i'm not gonna be mad but i think the avatar and black panther deserve it a little bit less in my opinion um documentary feature no updates there uh animated feature film i did watch the sea beast and i fell asleep um so i can't give it like a full opinion but i also gotta say that that's not looking too good i'm still gonna go with turning red as of now um but i'll update as i see the other ones uh animated short film that's staying the same uh best live action short film i saw les pupilles um i just couldn't get into it but maybe that was another like wrong place wrong mindset wrong time and everything like that so like luckily that's a very short one that was only like 38 minutes long so maybe yeah that one uh, if any like i can give that one another shot maybe maybe i can get like a uh showing at the theater that shows like all of the live action shorts together and maybe in the movie theater I'll be a little more susceptible to it, if that makes sense. Um, documentary short. Uh, I saw the Martha Mitchell effect. Um, and that one was interesting. That's a, a, it's a lot of stuff I didn't know. Um, always interested to hear some random U.S. history that I didn't know. And it's just like more uh, Watergate stuff. Um, it's the she was married to ah, i forget he was like he was married to someone in the nick she was married to someone in the nixon administration um and basically like was part like she like always spoke her mind like she was against the war and everything like that so they like kind of tried to shut her up a bunch of times and then the uh her husband resigned um and just to like keep her out of the basically to keep nixon safe and her out of the public eye and everything like that and try to have her institutionalized and like all this shitty things and then like she gets they get divorced and everything and then but it's you know it's just this, it's sad and interesting and it's worth a shot it's the short documentary so it's you know, it's not going to take too much of your time. So I'd check it out if you haven't got a chance yet. Um, and then just by default for best international film, the only one I've seen so far is All Quiet on the Western Front. So I have no choice but to make that my pick. But it was good. So, hey, um, it's up to these other ones to be better than it. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's all of the updates I have for this week. Um like I said, uh, planning on seeing The Whale tomorrow um, and try to get The Fablemans in there. 
Tar with uh, Kate Blanchett is on Peacock. Um, that just got added to there, so should be watching that one within a few days. Um, and I'm, uh, I started the uh, Elephant Whisperer, another documentary short. Um, that's on Netflix as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm planning on finishing that one here pretty soon. Um, oh yeah, and then what was interesting this last week was... I guess they did the academy did some investigation into uh, uh, what's her name, the one who's nominated for to Leslie. Hold on, I'm scrolling on my phone. Um, oh yeah, Andrea Riseboro. Uh, so they did some investigation into the uh, campaign tactics or something like that to see because basically, um. It's just, like, a lot of, like, word of mouth got her, like, the attention. Like, there wasn't, like, a paid uh, for your consideration campaign or something like that. Like, there usually is. Um, So, it's, like, it's kind of funny. It's, like, it makes, like, it's got to make her feel bad to be, like, oh, like, it's such a surprise that, i'm nominated that they have to do a full investigation like that's how i'd be feeling if i was her and then it looks bad on the academy to be like oh someone's not paying millions of dollars to uh get nominated there must be something wrong like she's getting she's getting nominated on merit alone and not uh a multi-million dollar campaign of billboards and like a giant 300 foot uh banner on sunset boulevard hanging off a hotel you know so it's like I, the academy is a mess like we all know that it's they've been a mess for a long time they're gonna continue to be a mess for a long time uh i'm still obsessed with the oscars despite all of that i would love to be able to vote in them one day um i don't know how or what capacity but it just that would be great that would be amazing um but we all know that they i don't know there's a lot of these very old people that are out of touch um and it's just always going to be like that i think because you get added in and then you age and your opinions don't align and then you vote green book for best picture you know so that's that it's it's gonna always happen they're gonna get it right sometimes and they'll continue to get it wrong unfortunately that's just the way that it goes you know but hey um Thank you for listening this week. Uh, I hope everyone's having a great week. I hope people are like trying to watch the nominees or what have you. Maybe you're going off my recommendations. Maybe you're thinking that I have no idea what I'm talking about. And then you're just doing the exact opposite of what I'm saying. So, and hey, if that's, if that's the case, then more power to you. You know, I, you know, all press is good press, I guess, you know, <laughs> but, um, yeah like i said thanks for listening um i'll get back to you guys next week on thursday with another update and i hope everyone's having a great february and see you next week thanks bye